Hey Lifehouse kids, thanks for joining us today. It's great you're here, let's get started. This month at Lifehouse Kids, we're talking about grit. Grit is refusing to give up when life gets hard. Our memory verse for this month is Galatians 6, 9. Read it with us. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Great job. Let's get ready to watch our new Bible story this week. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about grit. While we take a look at the story of a group of people who were stuck between an army and, well, the deep red sea. Oh, and we're also gonna be doing this. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about grit, which is refusing to give up when life gets hard or refusing to get it grouchy when every day for a whole week is cloudy. I like cloudy days. Really? They're good for thinking and reading. And hot chocolate. <sighs> There's actually a Cloud Appreciation Society. For reals? Wow, there really is. You should see the stuff they have posted. That's a lenticular cloud. They often form over mountains or even tall buildings. Looks like a pancake. I should have had breakfast this morning. <laughs> Check this out. These cloud rolls are called morning glories. They show up when a downdraft from an advancing storm causes moist warm air to rise and cool fast. Mm, looks like cloud twizzlers. <laughs> Here's another one. What? Mamatis clouds. They can form when ice crystals fall out of cumulonimbus storm clouds. I'm pretty sure that's a set of a Marvel movie. I've changed my mind. I think every day should be a cloudy day. Good, because we're about to make our own cloud right now. Yes! Let's, Let's make, make it. it! Step one, find a large glass jar. Done. Step two, fill a cup with ice cubes. So far, so good. Next, you're going to want to take the lid off of your jar. And step three, boil some water. And then pour it in the jar. Make sure you get a grown-up to help. And once you have a fair amount, carefully, carefully swirl it to warm up the sides. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> yes, it is. Next, turn the lid upside down and fill it with ice cubes. Then you're going to let it wait for 20 seconds. What are we supposed to do for 20 seconds? This next part has to be fast. Step six. What's gonna happen is you're going to remove the lid, pump hairspray into the jar, and then immediately put the lid back over it. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Can you do it? I can do it. Okay, three, two, one. I can see it brewing. Release the cloud. Oh, God. That's so cool. Bring on the cloudy days. Good, because there's a ginormous pillar of cloud in today's story. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the second book of the Old Testament, Exodus. God made a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But for hundreds of years, the Israelites have been enslaved in Egypt. They cried out to God for help and God sent a man named Moses who faced down the king, Pharaoh. After a lot of crazy plagues, Pharaoh let the Israelites go. But even though the Israelites were free, they're not yet safe. And that's where our story starts. Hey everyone! Okay, so as we all know, the Israelites were all packed up. 
Thousands and thousands of people, families, kids, herds, and flocks. You can imagine, they couldn't move very fast. God was leading them every step of the way, away from Egypt, appearing in a pillar of cloud during the daytime and a blazing pillar of flame at night. At last, the Israelites came to the Red Sea, which stood between them and the desert road to Canaan. But while the Israelites set up camp along the shore of the Red Sea, back in the palace, Pharaoh was having serious second thoughts. What have we done? We've lost all our workers. Prepare 600 chariots at once. Pharaoh jumped in his chariot and led an army of chariots and horsemen racing across the desert after the Israelites. The galloping horses and rattling chariots kicked up clouds of dust and soon the Israelites could see them coming. There was no way they could outrun the Egyptian army. The Israelites were trapped. Why did you bring us out in the desert to die? It would have been better to stay in Egypt than die out here. The Israelites wanted to give up, but Moses kept his eyes fixed firmly on God. Don't be afraid. Stand firm. The Lord will save you today. The Lord will fight for you. Just be still. Right there, in a place that seemed like a trap, God spoke to Moses. Hold out your walking stick. Reach out your hand over the Red Sea to divide the water. Divide the water? Okay, that is not what water does. But God's presence in the pillar of cloud moved from the front of the Israelite caravan and stood behind them all night to block them from view of the Egyptians. Moses reached his hand over the sea. Through the night, God sent a strong wind to push back the waters. Soon, the Israelites faced a dry path right through the middle of the Red Sea. I mean, can you imagine what it must have felt like? You're at the edge of a vast sea, but straight ahead, the water just boop, splits. I mean, ginormous walls of water rise up on either side of the path before you. Sure, I mean, you want to escape the Egyptians, but if you walk along this path, the waters could fall on you. I mean, it must have taken every ounce of courage and grit they had. But the Israelites followed Moses along that path, straight through the heart of the sea. All night, those families hurried toward freedom. But the Egyptians gave chase. They followed the Israelites right into the Red Sea. At last, the Israelites made it through. But the Egyptians were right behind him. God spoke to Moses again. Reach out your hand over the sea. As Moses reached out his hand, those walls of water began to crash down and the sea rushed back into place, washing over the Egyptian horses and chariots. The entire Egyptian army was swept away. The Israelites were left safe and dry on the far side of the Red Sea. Moses' sister Miriam led them in a song of celebration. I will sing to the Lord, he is greatly honored. The Lord gives me strength and protects me. He has saved me. The end. <laughs> Whoa, things must have felt so out of control for Moses and the Israelites. Oh, for sure. But God was in control the whole time. God opened up a way for them to just keep going. So what's our part in the story? Well, there are some times when you feel stuck, right? Like maybe one particular subject at school is super hard for you and you feel like it'll never get easier. Keep going because God knows what you're facing. God will walk with you the whole way through. Or you're just starting in a new school and you haven't been able to make friends just yet. Don't give up. God can help you find friends when you least expect it. And best of all, God gave us Jesus to show what it looks like to keep going. Exactly. I mean, Jesus didn't give up loving us, even though it cost him his life. And when we follow Jesus, we have the power of the Holy Spirit to keep going too. That is amazing news. Isn't it? <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, Erica. So here's the thing. Hold on. 
because God is still in control. Knowing that can help you grow grit. And God makes some pretty incredible clouds. Is that a dog? That's definitely a werewolf howling. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. I think that one's Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you are watching at home, thanks for tuning in. If you are at one of our campuses in Bakersfield, Coachella Valley, Delano, or Wasco, get ready. Because your small group leader has lots more planned for you. See, See you next time. time. Bye.